Sierra College delivering our you for right. printer. Let's put it in our classroom. We'll see. First what impressions. What do you guys think? It's awesome. Bigger than nice. Awesome. Yeah. M for model, S for support, and E for envelope, which is the build chamber itself. On the serrations, push and pull. Okay. All right. So here's our head. When it's operating normally, I'm going to run it forward now. When it's operating normally, it pulls material through the feed tube, through the drive block, pinched in between the drive roller and the idler roller, and it feeds right through here into the liquefier tip, through the liquefier, and out the bottom. Okay. And I stopped that. I'm going to use the toggle bar here to toggle over to the support side. You see how the whole head toggles over? And now when I run it forward, the drive roller, will, drive roller turns the other way, pulls the material through the drive block, into the liquefier tip, through the liquefier, comes out of the liquefier. We just got the head, now we're skipping the gantry, this kind of legacy item, and we're going to the tips. And Rick, when do you do the tips? I do the tips whenever the tips are disturbed. So if you loosen both screws, um, uh, even if the tip hasn't come out, of course, anytime the tips are removed, and tip calibration is also required as part of changing the, as part of the changing the tips process. Um, I like to do the tip calibration. Tip calibration. Machine, there's two of them, or two calibration parts to calibrate all three axes. There's the Z calibration, which is completely automatic, and the X Y calibration, which we have to read using the loop. So to start these, I'm going to go to tip. And the first one we run is calibrate Z and until it's a start part. Now what's going to happen is it's going to adjust itself and then it's going to sit for a while while the temperature stabilizes. The envelope is still a little on the cold side. It's going to sit for a while while the temperature stabilizes and once the temperatures are up, it's going to so start we're inventor, building. And then I'm going to save it and I'm, right. I'm going to export this in CAD format. And I want to select STL files. Now, so and this go to options, and you'll notice that my units is centimeters. Okay, so we'll export the STL in centimeters. STL files don't have unit information in them, they just have numbers. So the units that it's exported in determines how the size of those numbers. And there's no other clue that the software that the Catalyst has as to what size the object is. So I'm going to change and I'm going to bring my surface deviation down to zero. Now I always bring my surface deviation down to zero to make my parts as smooth as possible. So I'll go to File and Open, and we'll come here to my Documents. Here's my widget file. And here it is opened up. Now, because of the plane that I picked, and because I wasn't paying much attention to what I was doing, the uh, model ends up being oriented kind of weird. Okay. Um, that's okay, though. I can fix that. So this is just something for looking at. It's not doesn't have to be a particular strength. So I'm going to build this hollow. So use the least amount of material. So I'm going to select low density sparse as the as the build type. Okay. Um, support fill, I'm always going to leave on the switch you do if you're doing something that doesn't hold it, that can't hold itself up, like a tree kind of thing. I'm going to go to the orientation tab and fix the orientation. Okay. So, you know, when I'm orienting the part, I have, th I have three things to consider. I have um, accuracy, strength, and support material. The machine is very accurate on the XY plane. So if I'm doing a round piece, if I'm doing a, a if I'm doing a, bear, a bushing, for example, that needs to have a shaft go through it. If I build the bushing so that it's round on the XY plane, it'll be perfectly round when I print it. But if I build the bushing like this on the X, Z, or Y, Z plane, it's going to be represented by stair steps. It's not going to be perfectly round. Um, so if I need to fit parts together, the parts that need to make, the parts that need to match, should be on the X, Y plane as much as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, it should be on the XY plane as much as possible. Uh, strength, um, the material is about 85-90% as strong along the Z axis as it is along the XY axis. An easy way to think of this, since you all, since you all do a lot of stuff with wood, is the material has a grain, just like wood, and it has, the, and it has strength issues about related to the grain, just like wood. Okay, and in this case, the grain runs 
horizontally. The ring runs along the XY plane. So um, if you if you're building a shaft, for example, you're building a shaft. If I build it vertical, it'll be perfectly round, but more likely to snap than if I build it horizontal. Right. But now with the uh, with this with the material that it's using, it is it is still about 85 or 90 percent as strong along the z-axis. So it's not a huge deal. Okay. And lastly, is support material. Uh, you want to pick the orientation that uses the least amount of support material. So if I'm building something like a cup, I might find that my best or that this orientation is the best is the best one. And I'd have this orientation and this orientation both as options. I'd want to use this one so that I only had support material around the outside instead of this one, which would fill the inside with support material. You have it all oriented, and then you go add. And then I just hit add to pack. Now adding to the pack will do the slicing, calculate the supports, create the tool paths, and then write the tool paths to a CMB file. Now the CMB file is always created in the same folder that the STL file was in. So there's the STL file and this is the CMB file. It's a .cmb.gz file. This is what's actually sent to the machine. So once I process the file, I'll have these, the CMB file associated with it. If I want to print that same thing again, I can just open the CMB, I can just insert the CMB file in the pack. So just like an NC file? Kind of, yeah. Just the code. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, here, if I was doing an assembly or whatnot and I wanted to see the individual layers, well, you know, I'll show you the individual layers. So you notice my orientation tab has now changed into layer view. Go to my top layer and a top view, and then I can use the page up and page down key to see my model. How thick are the layers? Like 5,000 or 10,000? The layers are 10,000. So on the general tab, we set our layer thickness at 10,000. Okay? Oh, that is cool. That is cool. These yeah. lines on the tab here are the lines of the plate itself. They're the lines that are on the plate itself. Okay. And then under the pack tab? On the pack tab. The left side of the left side of this representation is left of the plate, right side is right, this is where the handle is, that's where the purge bucket is. Okay. So I always like to build the first part right up right up front and center on the window. Um, point three inches of point three cubic inches of support. It'll take about two hours Four and a half dollars. For materials. For materials, yeah. And then you just hit print. Just start print. Print button and it'll start printing. And then the job would